Hello, my name is Dr. Aaron Dishnell, the inventor of Walk the Web 3D Browsing. And this next tutorial, I want to talk about a common scale for 3D objects. Now, when I invented 3D Browsing, I had an idea in mind that I wanted you to be able to create your own 3D communities and then be able to put these 3D buildings into it so that you can maintain a 3D building in one place and yet have it placed in many communities. So like if I have 3dwalktheweb.com, I could put your building in my community and you could walk in and visit it and yet somebody else can have 3 dot whatever their domain name is and I could go over there and see my building in their different communities. So it's a way of sharing and connecting with others and the to be able to do that though, you really need to have a common frame of reference of how big you're building things so that you don't walk down a street and see that my building looks the size of a dollhouse and yet next door we have the giant's house at the top of the beanstalk. <laughs> so what I did was I came up with a common scale of measurement that was technically based off of the actual rendering engine that I use for the gaming engine. So one unit is equal to about six inches. Now where that came up with is a wall is technically one unit wide and if you think about a typical wall in a house you have a two by four for framing and then you have a piece of drywall on one side and then a piece of drywall on the other side which ends up being roughly about six inches thick by the time you're done. So then if you take that idea in mind and then expand it out to how high a door should be and how wide it should be and how tall the ceilings are and everything, it ends up being where one unit is six inches. So let me show you in 3D browsing here that when you walk up against the wall, the other piece that was kind of a factor in deciding that measurement scale is, notice I have the wall here. When I walk up to it, it just as I approach it, it just goes beyond uh, the bottom of the window to the top of the window of my browser. So that ends up being technically a 10 foot wall. Now if I right click it you can see that in this case the length Y which is your vertical length of the wall is 20 units. So then 20 units would be 10 feet tall. In the same way it is one unit wide so it's a six inch thick wall. And if I show you, if I move over by where this window is and look at the size of the window, you can see that the distance is actually, you know, looks appropriate for a windowsill and the thickness of the wall. Now, in the same way, if I pick on the door and select it by, uh, by the way, I'm right mouse clicking the door and the wall to be able to select which object I want to look at the measurements and edit it. So in this case, now I have the door selected and the door is 16 units high, which would be eight foot tall and eight units wide, which would be four foot uh, wide. So then when you walk up to the door and you go inside, notice that as you're passing through, you don't see the top of the door. So it's just enough room that you're passing through and you know, it doesn't look like you're gonna hit your head on the door, technically. Okay, so with those two measurements, like I said, uh, one unit is six inches. Now we have another concept that's involved in scaling, and that is when we take and build something, for example, a 3D thing, or I build a 3D building and want to put it into a 3D community, there's a scaling sense to it, where if I drop, for example, I've got this table right here, if I right click it, this table is set here and it has um, a scale of one to one to one and this is a ratio. So this is the original size that the table was built. If I want to make it taller, for example, all I have to do is increase on the size going, uh, the ratio of the scale of for Y. In the same way, I can make it bigger wide and length for scale X and Z. And now, with the same concept, it's built once. If I shared this table, you could actually place it into a giant's house by just scaling it up uh, to whatever size you want it to be. Or if you wanted it to be a little table inside of a dollhouse, you could go down to, let's say, one-tenth the scale and put it inside of a dollhouse. Now, the same way this table works inside this room, you can also take a building and put it inside of a community and then scale it appropriate. So let's say I wanted to make a showroom 
and I'm going to put a table there, and it's going to be like architectural creations of different buildings that I've created. I could make it where it's one tenth scale. It's actually the building that I created, not a copy of it or anything else. It's just scaled down to one tenth scale. It looks like a little model sitting on the table. I can walk up, you can actually look at it, it'll have working doors, everything. Then all of a sudden next to it, I can have a whole nother building and all the settings that are associated with that. So it's an easy way to scale things as a whole, the building, the table, the location, the 3D things, um, and then place them where you want them. You can rotate them, you can scale them, and you can make everything work well together. So just to review, we have two parts of scaling. One is when you originally build something and you're doing the building blocks. So you're saying, I want a box and I want to put it here and it's going to be a wall. Make it this high, make it this wide, make it this thick. Now, that is the one unit equals six inches. The second type of scaling is when you take that completed object, if it's a 3D thing or a 3D building, and you place it into another building or another community. Then what you would do is you would, uh, the scaling is actually the ratio from its original size to how big you actually want to display it in your uh, community or building. So that's a tutorial on how to scale things. Next, we're going to actually start creating and building things now that you have a kind of a concept on how big to make something. Uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. If you want more information and to see the other tutorials, please go to www.walktheweb.com. Thank you.